This is your WAUK Daily News Roundup for The Shaw, 101.1 FM and 540 AM in Waukesha. Civic Media News, I'm Terry Bell. Here's what Wisconsin needs to know. Families of inmates at the Waupun State Prison are keeping up the pressure for reforms. Family, friends, and former inmates held a protest Sunday. Meanwhile, supporters of former employees who face felony charges say four recent deaths at Waupun were not their fault. They're calling for more accountability from the Corrections Department. Governor Evers is calling for an independent audit of Milwaukee Public Schools. Milwaukee has been dealing with budget cuts and accounting problems that led the superintendent to resign. The state is still waiting for a financial report from Milwaukee that was due last fall. Observers say four state Senate seats are competitive this year as Democrats try to take the majority in as soon as two years. If you don't win all four, you're okay. You can get there. If you win just two, it's really tough. That makes it challenging. So for Democrats, they want three. Three gives them a pretty good chance for 2026. J.R. Ross of WisPolitics speaking with Wisconsin Eye. Ann Jacobs is the new chair of the Wisconsin Elections Commission. She won a two-year term by unanimous vote yesterday. The panel oversees Wisconsin's election process, which is run by clerks at the local level. Wisconsin small business owners say they're worried about proposed cuts to the Affordable Care Act. Krissa Ostenzo owns an optometry clinic with her husband in Ladysmith. She says the premium cap from recent adjustments put health insurance within people's reach. We always just had to encourage our employees to get health insurance and try to pay them enough to do it. And it really wasn't until the 8% that we succeeded in that. And they started all having health insurance. The temporary ACA premium caps are due to expire at the end of next year. I'm Terry Bell, Civic Media News. Now here's what you need to know closer to home. For WAUK News, I'm Stuart J. Waddles. Independent auditors will investigate MPS. Governor Tony Evers has announced plans to hire outside independent auditors to examine the financial and operational issues within Milwaukee Public Schools. The move has received support from both Milwaukee leaders and the school district itself. Republican lawmakers at the state capitol have expressed concerns, saying that the Legislative Audit Bureau should handle the review instead of the governor's office. In her announcement for the Wisconsin Supreme Court race, Susan Crawford labeled former Attorney General Brad Schimmel as a right-wing extremist. Crawford is currently a Dane County Circuit Court judge. Schimmel is a Waukesha County Circuit Court judge and launched his bid for the state Supreme Court in December. Crawford's statement directly targeted Schimmel, who at this point is her opponent. Middle schools might not be missing next year in Tosa. There was a meeting last night in Wauwatosa which included talk of shutting down middle schools and sending students to either elementary or high schools. K-6 through would go to elementary. 7th graders and up would go to the high schools. The board discussed the plan but did not take a vote. The district says they could save about $30 million in maintenance costs and they say a smaller enrollment presents a need for less space. A safety alert is out due to a sinkhole in the area. The warning was put out Sunday by the Whitefish Bay Police Department. They were telling people to steer clear of the entrance to the Big Bay Buckley Park. The sinkhole has formed, leaving the ground unstable. Caution tape and cones have been set up. It's believed recent rain caused the issue with crews working to make a fix. It's likely to be wonderful tonight in downtown Waukesha for the start of the Tuesday Tribute Series. A tribute to Eric Clapton takes place at the crossroads of Wisconsin and Maple inside Cutler Park. Concessions start to get sold at 5.30 with people settling in for a 7 p.m. show start. Tonight's event is sponsored by the Park Foundation of Waukesha. The concert series runs through the summer in the downtown area. And that's what you need to know. I'm Stuart J. Waddles, WAUK News. The Brewers with a win over the Blue Jays. Hi, I'm Mike Clemens with sports. The Brewers with a 3-1 victory over the Toronto Blue Jays. The crew had not hit a home run in the past week until Jackson Churio did it in the third, followed by Willie Adamas in the fourth inning on Bally Sports Wisconsin. Adamas, deep left center, and the Brewers are going to have the lead. Number 10 for Willie. That was a bomb. Brewers manager, Pat Murphy. Willie's such a competitor. 
I've seen him hit that same home run 20 times since I've been here. Slider kind of down in the zone, right in that same spot. Right-hand pitcher Colin Ray held Toronto to just three hits over seven innings in his longest outing in eight years. I asked him what made the difference. We were kind of executing that backdoor sinker, and that played really well off of other stuff that we were attacking him with. And then, you know, they were pretty aggressive, so we were getting ahead. And, you know, we played great defense and got some key hits when we needed to. Game two of the three-game series tonight in Milwaukee. NBA. Darvin Ham coming back to the Milwaukee Bucks as an assistant after a two-year stint as the head coach of the Lakers. UConn's Dan Hurley declining an offer from the Lakers to become their next head coach. NFL. 40-year-old tight end Mercedes Lewis re-signed for another year with the Chicago Bears. This will be his 19th season. Packers mini camp underway. Quarterback Jordan Love asked, who does he consider his number one receiver? We have a lot of depth at that receiver position. Um, I think it's a good problem to have. You know, you don't have to have a, a number one receiver. I think it's it works out well when you can spread the ball out. I think in the long run, it, it helps us in not having a number one guy, a true number one guy. But um, I think all those guys can step up and be the one, you know, any given day. That's the Packers' Jordan Love with sports. I'm Mike Clemens. On your entertainment beat, I'm Pete Schwaba. Comedian and actor George Lopez is at odds with the California casino after his show ended 30 minutes early. According to Deadline, the comedian got into it with hecklers from the stage. Lopez and his security team claim the club did nothing to calm the unruly crowd, making Lopez feel unsafe. The Eagle Mountain Casino in Porterville, California, sees it differently, posting on Facebook that Lopez yelled at the audience and his security team did nothing to ease the tension or remove anyone. Either way, you don't hear of a comedian heckling the audience and removing himself very often. There is a new Lord of the Rings film in the works. Producer Peter Jackson is at work on Lord of the Rings, The Hunt for Gollum. If you're wondering if Sir Ian McClellan would return to play Gandalf, he is willing. But he has one condition, saying he will do it only if he's alive. Such a diva. McClellan told the Times of London there is no script, no plan, and no offer, but seemed open to doing it. Here's one of Pete's picks. Richard Linklater's latest film, Hitman, starring and co-written by lead actor Glenn Powell, is really good. Powell plays a college professor but works for the police by night pretending to be a hitman to entrap those looking to have people killed. The story is filled with fun turns, suspense, sweet romance, and is based on a true story. Hitman can be streamed on Netflix and received excellent reviews. What do you do to help restore your image after you accost the host of the Oscars? You show that you are a man of the people by watching your new film Bad Boys Ride or Die with the commoners. That is what Will Smith did, actually sitting right in the middle of a crowded theater. The actor revealed himself after the end credits. Oh, yeah. And you also make sure fan reaction is captured on TikTok by the theater manager and that there's another camera outside to capture the glory. When Smith went in for handshakes or hugs, most flinched, but no one was slapped. He is back. When given the chance to ride or die this past weekend, the box office chose to ride thanks to the latest installment of Bad Boys Ride or Die. The Will Smith comeback vehicle and fourth film in the Bad Boys franchise raked in $56 million bucks at the domestic box office and topped $105 million globally. A nice boost for theater owners who are hoping for more good fortune next weekend with the release of Inside Out 2. The animated sequel is expected to pull in $110 million globally. Kid and family-friendly films have kept the box office at least somewhat respectable this summer with the strength of Garfield and John Krasinski's If. Rounding out the top five from this past weekend were Garfield in second place, If was number three, horror film and directorial debut for Ishana Shamalan's The Watchers opened in fourth place, and it was Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes at number five. Bad Boy's 97% approval rating with audiences should give the film and box office legs for weeks to come. For more showbiz fun, tune into Nightlight with me, Peach Waba, weeknights from 7 to 9 p.m. on the Civic Media Radio Network. With your forecast, I'm Corey Hartman. For today, a chance of showers, a high of 75. A few showers or thunderstorms tonight will see a low of 60. For Wednesday, sunshine and a high near 85. For Wednesday night, a scattered storm, otherwise mostly cloudy, and a low of 66. Showers in 86 Thursday. Right now, it's 55. That's your WAUK Daily News Roundup from Civic Media. Subscribe to this podcast on Spotify, Apple, or wherever you find your podcasts. Find more news at WAUKradio.com.